A new federal lawsuit filed in a case we've been following makes a sobering claim. Jay Anderson Jr. was shot and killed back in June of 2016 in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Anderson, who was black, was sleeping in his car in a park when he was confronted by Officer Joseph Mensa, who is also black. The officer claims he shot Anderson in self-defense after he reached for a gun. But the lawsuit filed this week makes a different claim. Anderson's family says the officer's department taught him to view black people as dangerous. Mensa fatally shot two other men in recent years, one black, the other Latino, but wasn't charged in any of these cases. Joining me once again are Jay's parents, Linda and Jay Anderson Sr., along with attorney uh, Kimberly Motley, who represents the families of all three men killed by Officer Mensa. Thank you all for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. We reached out to the uh, police department as well, um, the officer's attorney, the city of Wauwatosa. Um, only the department responded saying that they are aware of the lawsuit, but they uh, can't comment. All right, Linda, first question to you. Why was it important for you and your family uh, to take action and file this lawsuit? Because I know my son and I know my son would never do anything to hurt anyone. Um, Jay was a kind person. He loved his family. He had a daughter that he loved dearly. And I wasn't going to stop until justice was done. Jay, uh, the lawsuit claims that the police department taught this officer to view black people as dangerous. Why do you believe that's what happened here? Because the way he pulled up in the uh, parking lot, how he had his floodlights on Jay and how he had his hands up for four minutes and 50 seconds. And, and you know, he was inebriated and he just executed my son. Kimberly, let me bring you in uh, and, and pose the same question to you. Well, I mean, I think it was really important to file this lawsuit because, you know, it's really about three things. It's about truth, justice, and accountability. You know, Officer Joseph Mentz was a former officer with the Wellington Police Department and was hired right now by another department and is currently a detective in that department, was an officer with this department for um, six years. He was on the street for four years and seven months. And while he was on the streets for four years and seven months, he fired his weapon 19 times, killing three males of color. And so it's really important that, um, you know, that there's truth, justice, and accountability. And unfortunately, this department has uh, routinely shoved its head in the sand and has done nothing to discipline Joseph Mensa and his actions. follow-up Kimberly um, the officer at the center of this suit Joseph Mensa is also black so some may be confused by the claim that a black officer was taught to fear those that look like him what what, what say you well I mean I think it's, it's interesting that people make that argument I mean people, women can understand you know women not liking other women it happens you know and I think that this police department has a history of devaluing black and brown people you know, in 2018, this is a community with, with, um, with a little over 5% of its population is black. But yet in 2018, 83% of the arrests were black people consistently over the years. And again, it has less than a 6% black population. Over 60% of its traffic stops are of black and brown people. In addition to this, for those people that have been protesting on behalf of the Anderson family as well as Alvin Cole's family and Antonio Gonzalez's family, this police department has created a protester list where they have protesters, their names, their addresses, their pictures, their social media, and we now know that they have been monitoring people for over a year, including they put me on this list. And so we have found mountains of evidence to suggest that this police department has a real problem with those that challenge their authority and with um, black and brown people in the community. 
In addition to that, we found that this, the police department has also created fabricated arrest records against protesters who are supporting the family of Jay Anderson. And these are receipts that we have. We have another 70 plaintiff civil rights lawsuit against this police department. Senator Tammy Baldwin and Congressman Greg Gwen Moore have both joined us in calling for a federal civil rights probe of the Wauwatosa Police Department. And this has to stop. You see this kind of culture as an issue beyond this community. Um, Kimberly, explain why it's important for other communities, especially some of our smaller towns, to pay close attention to this lawsuit? You know, I think Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, represents every town in America. Unfortunately, there are a lot of deep-seated is um, issues with policing in America. And of late, it seems like for some of those issues, we are coming to grips with that. But now it's about trying to figure out how to fix that problem. And, you know, I'm kind of personally and professionally, I'm over the whole thing of evaluating the problem. Now it's about fixing it. And unfortunately, for country or cities like Wauwatosa, they have refused to do anything to substantively fix their police departments. So perhaps lawsuits such as this will hold them accountable and will force them to actually do something about the way that they view and devalue and police the black and brown community. Last question to you, Kimberly. Um, there's been an update on the push for criminal charges against uh, this officer since we last had you on. What's the status of that now? Well, I mean, um, thanks to the Anderson family and also uh, Jay Anderson's uh, fiance, Starkeisha De La Rosa, we actually filed a federal, um, excuse me, a John Doe hearing where we tried to convince a court, and we did, that there is probable cause to charge him with a criminal offense for the Jay Anderson shooting. So on October 27th, um, the judge is going to appoint a special prosecutor on that case to investigate whether there is probable cause. And the judge actually gave an order that there was probable cause to charge Officer Joseph Mensa for the killing of Jay Anderson Jr. So we're gonna make sure to follow that and we're gonna try to do everything that we can to make sure that he's held legally accountable for his actions. Uh, Jay, Linda, last question to you, um, to you both. One of you can answer, both of you can answer, but I, I'd like to know more about your son and, and how you and your family remember him. We, we remember um, everything about Jay, and that's how we get through this. We, we laugh um, about things that we've done together. Um, Jay was a big um, person that liked amusement parks and things like that, so we talk about those things um, just to keep him in our heart. And we also get his, his daughter um, on weekends, and we... Um, talk about him all the time to her he put such an impression on her that she remembers everything about him and when she died he was she was only a year old but she remembers him and she loves him to death so um we we just do things like that we look at pictures with him um we we take him to things that he liked to do you know when he was alive just to keep, you know, her with him and us. That's what gets us through this. Linda and Jay Anderson Sr., thank you so very much. Attorney Kimberly Motley, thank you all for your time tonight.